right guys, so we don't have a huge amount of time left to be here at the auto show today for media day, but before we head over to the other building to show you a couple other things and film a couple other videos, um, I had to come around the corner here to show you a couple uh, big heavy hitters. You can see we have a Lego car of some description under us, and if I come this way real quickly, we can see we have a picture here of the Lego Technic Lamborghini Sion. But of course, we don't just have a picture of it. We actually here have the full car, which as I walk over to right on cue is making Well, excuse the interruption there for a second as the car makes um, all kinds of beautiful V12 Lamborghini noises. But yeah, this is all really awesome to see. You might remember a few years ago we had the um, Lego Technic Bugatti Chiron. Of course, they've also had the McLaren Senna, which you guys may have seen over on Ashmeo 50s channel and just in general. But yeah, awesome to see these cars made out of Lego bricks in a full one-to-one -one scale. Just over there we have a regular Sion, which we'll check out in just a second to compare. But yeah, super awesome to see all these Lego bricks put together. And they are real Lego bricks. I'm not going to touch the car, but you can see these are full Lego bricks all put together to have the carbon fiber pattern for the back, the 63 on it. Of course, the tail lights would actually light up. We have the full exhaust, the engine cover, the fully modeled engine, which you can't really see inside there, but trust me, it's really cool detail. Of course, the clear bricks on the back for the glass. And yeah, obviously the full interior as well, modeled exactly off of the car um, with the full Lego seats. I don't know if the doors open on this or not. It doesn't look like they do, but yeah, super awesome to see the um, the Lego Technic full-scale I'm going to see on. Of course, sitting on the proper wheels, but even the brake discs and rotors and everything are fully made out of Lego. On the front, guys, you can even see how they've done a little bit of a fade with the Lego bricks. So you can see we got the green, which kind of fades up in the middle into the gray and then kind of goes over the top with the rest of the gray and the carbon fiber look. Again, we have the headlights here, which actually have lights, real lights behind them, but are all made out of Lego brick with the clear brick, so you can actually see the lights out of them. And of course, we also have the regular size, if you will, actual Lego car that you guys can purchase and build for yourself, should you wish. And of course, over here, guys, not to be outshined by the Lego version just behind me and just across from it, we have the full real Lamborghini Sion. Now, of course, the Sion is part of the Lamborghini special one-off program. I don't remember exactly how many of these they built. I think it was only 63 of them. Of course, they built this car with the 63 on the back to uh, this year, 2023, with Lamborghini is actually celebrating their 60th anniversary. So this is kind of one of the cars to help usher in that anniversary. Yeah, super aggressive lines. This is finished in the red paint. I believe it's Rosso Fuoco paint with the kind of two-tone gold and silver or well, bronze and silver wheels. We have carbon fiber all in the headlight inlays all around the front. The entire top half of the car is carbon fiber, so the roof. And you can even see that fade. Hope you guys can pick out. So it goes carbon fiber, carbon fiber, and then right on the roof, right, basically right behind where the passenger sits, it starts to fade from carbon fiber into painted. I believe the entire body of this car is made out of carbon fiber, so fairly easy to do, but always really cool to see the fade on there. We got this completely reworked uh, back end. We got the triple taillights on on each side. We have the hexagonal shaped um, exhaust tips. Of course, Lamborghini is kind of known for their hexagon shapes. Again, more carbon fiber underneath the wing, um, carbon fiber all over the engine bay. And yeah, the cool thing with this car is it's actually Lamborghini's first attempt at making a hybrid car. So this car, the Sion, is famous for having the super capacitor in there. So it's not fully, it can't run fully electric drive, but it has an electric motor in there to help assist and basically kind of take out some of the lag during the shifts. Of course, though, some people say, oh, it's just an Aventador with a new body kit, still has a big single clutch, still has a big V12 in the back, but definitely the technology in this works, and it's also tech that we're going to see in the new uh, Aventador successor, which is launching sometime soon, but yeah, really dope to see this car, and finally actually for me to see a Sion for the first time in person, and sitting alongside of it, we have an STL with this awesome spec, all fully green, black accents, and the gold wheels. We've seen the STL on the channel before. Not a lot more I can say. The STL, just probably the wildest version 
of the Huracan. Well, it is definitely the wildest version of the Huracan out there. And yeah, really cool to see these two Lambos sitting side by side. Again, as I mentioned, as part of this year being the 60th anniversary of Automobili Lamborghini. And real quick guys, before we leave the Sion, I should mention the name. So the name Sion in Italian um, actually stands for, I believe, uh, some kind of a lightning wind or a lightning storm that happens in the Bolognese region of Italy. Of course, the Lamborghini factory is in Santa Gata Bolognese um, in Italy. And so it's quite appropriate that the name they have is based off of lightning, which is kind of a bit of an electric phenomenon in nature, given the fact that they put the supercapacitor in here to have some electrification inside of their kind of you know, flagship V12 cars. So really cool to see a company like that kind of integrating the names of something that's from the region into their car. All right guys, so quickly I popped in this side room which is kind of the 80s and 90s room. So we can see we got the classic arcade games all over there. We have a couple of classic 80s and 90s cars. So we have the Alfa Romeo RZ, which is by Zagato, the RZ Roadster from 1994. And over here, guys, we have the GMC Typhoon, which is kind of a crazy vehicle. So basically, GMC took one of their small, lightweight SUVs, stuffed a big motor into it. It made a lot of horsepower. Didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And we saw the Escalade V earlier. This was kind of the 90s version of that in a way. The, but they took kind of a seemingly normal SUV, stuck a whole bunch of power into it, and said, here you go. We move over here, we have an old Civic. Of course, you guys know I drive my Civic. So this is a 1991 Honda Civic Special Edition. So this car is one year older than I am. We got all the classic board games in the back. And we go back to the future here. We have the DeLorean um, DMC-12. Of course, this one kitted out exactly like the one from Back to the Future. And you know, this will definitely look like it'll go 88 miles an hour. We have a uh, Jeep replica, of course, kitted out from exactly like you would see in the movie Jurassic Park. We have a Plymouth Prowler here with the optional trailer on the back. Definitely one of the quirkiest and probably coolest cars of the late, late 90s, early 2000s. We got a lovely e E36 uh, M3 over here. Sorry, E30 M3, not E36, an E30, 1997 E30. And we have this, which I have no idea what this is is the 1997 Magna Velma Torero prototype. Um, I have no idea what this thing is. It looks awesome, it screams 1980s, and I guess it's a concept car of some sorts. Um, yeah, definitely weird, very 80s, very cool. Next up over here, guys, we have the Porsche, which is actually the 75 years of Porsche display. So a couple highlights, we have the 2021 911 Targa 4S Heritage Edition design. This is the new 992. I guess going back to some EVs, we have the Taycan the Turismo Cross, which is basically a more hatchback version of the regular Taycan. Not a huge fan of this design. I prefer more of the coupe, sleeky design of the regular Taycan, but I guess you probably get a little bit more storage in the back, so maybe slightly more practical as a daily driver. We have another kind of a legend here, guys. We have the 2004 GT3 RS, the 996 edition, and created with the white with the blue wheels. Of course, the GT3S badging on the side. Six liter boxer engine, as you do. And yeah, the 996 GT3 RS were kind of regarded as one of the better GT3 RSs ever to be built. Let me come over here to this epic race car. So this is a 69 Porsche 917, and this is uh, the long tail. This is chassis number um, 005. And yeah, you can see just how low and sleek it is. Of course, Porsche is kind of a famous race car. You can see you sit super low down there, obviously, because race car super lightweight, and you can kind of see how the design of this has kind of influenced cars like the Carrera GT and, and the 918. But awesome to see one of these, of course, again, one of Porsche's most famous racers. You guys might know the Pink Pig as well, which is famous for racing back in the day. But yeah, definitely awesome to see this as part of the 75 years of Porsche display. The 87 Porsche 959 with super awesome spec with the red with the all white wheels. Uh, never seen that before. We have one of the Hypercar Holy Trinity. We have the Porsche 918 Spider. This car really needs no in further introduction. And then we have arguably the greatest Porsche ever built, the Porsche Carrera GT, which is just, again, a car that needs no in introduction. Arguably one of the best sounding V10 engines, race derived manual. 2006 Carrera GT. I can stare at these things all day, but I'm not going to because we have more cool things to see here and my battery is about to die. Okay, right, back over in the other building and I'm gonna move quickly because my battery is starting to die. But there's a couple of things I want to pinpoint as highlights. But yeah, let's quickly go around and I'll show you kind of the highlights of new things over here.
And of course, I have to start over here, guys, with the, the Ram TRX. This is actually a new one. This is the new Havoc edition. So I am not sh don't really remember every single change with it. You get a cool plaque on the inside. You get this awesome yellow paintwork. But I think really apart from that is still the same TRX that we've come to know and love. Basically, the Ram with the Hellcat engine inside of it. But yeah, I couldn't come through here and not mention the... The Ram, especially the TRX. Again, if you guys know me, you know I'm a huge fan of these trucks. Hopefully gonna own one one day, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, the new TRX Havoc Edition. One of the highlights here for me. We have the new Dodge Hornet here, which is kind of the new like crossover SUV um, from Dodge. And it features a two liter uh, inline four cylinder. So not the fastest thing on the block, but kind of a new, a new vehicle from Dodge kind of branching into a kind of a, I guess a new little era um, of cars or a new segment of cars so it's kind of cool here to see the Dodge Hornet we have this one here in the yellow and the one over here on the turntable in blue of course we have a charger over here a charger Hellcat can't walk away without checking out one of those don't need to talk much about the Hellcat that have been around for a while you guys probably know everything there is to know about the Hellcat uh, other than I also want one of these Another cool thing over here on the Jeep stand is the new Jeep uh, Rubicon, and this is the Wrangler um, plug-in hybrid. So, kind of cool. So not the full EV, which they also they do have the 4XE up there. So this is kind of the branch in the middle. If you don't quite want to go for a full EV Jeep or the Hummer that we saw earlier, but you still want some quiet mode, you can go and get this. A couple of crazy new cars from Hyundai, a couple of the concepts. So this is the RN22E, uh, which is basically their concept of a full EV um, endline car. So they're trying to take um, all their experience from racing and everything else to push the performance of, of electricity. And this, so they want to try to make this the fastest um, EV electric car, but also maintaining track performance and also down the line, the ability to actually drive this on the road as kind of a daily uh, car and make kind of the best sports car that they can with full EV. Quick start of the front. And actually, I must say, I actually, I do like the design um, of this car. Again, this is kind of a prototype, so this might not be final design, but what Hyundai is trying to do with this is totally, totally cool. And um, even though it's an EV, I, I approve. Over here, we have the Hyundai Envision 74. So the quick backstory on this is that they kind of res resurrected the design back from all the way from 1974 with the Hyundai Pony, which was considered kind of their first sports car. Unfortunately, that car never actually made it into production or into market. So now they've redeveloped this as a hydrogen fuel cell uh, powered car. Again, trying to push the limits of technology and what's possible while also bringing back a classic design. And if you guys recognize this design a little bit, um, the original design was also taken well, I guess inspired uh, the, the DMC DeLorean. So the design of the original Pony was taken for that, morphed into the DeLorean. Um, and then now Hyundai has come out with this, which is again, another kind of vision of the future while also kind of stepping back in the past to their roots of, of design and being able to push forward um, into the future of what's possible again using hydrogen fuel cell technology and hopefully something like this you know, will be possible in the future and because it will be epic to actually see these going down the road and be able to kind of own and drive one. And I should also mention guys that this also has batteries in it as well so it is an electric vehicle but again it also uses a hydrogen fuel cell technology again to try to push that ultimate performance and I guess also as a test to see if the hydrogen fuel cell technology is something that we could adapt into future vehicles. And it, this thing just looks awesome. I couldn't come through here and not show the new Nissan, new Nissan Z. So we have two examples here. We have the blue one here, which is a manual, and we have the yellow one over there, which is an automatic. But yeah, the quick stats on, on this car, of course, guys, it's the um, basically the evolution of the 370, 370Z. Um, a lot of the car is, is 370 with the body panels kind of changed up to kind of invoke uh, the history of the Nissan Z or the Z if sorry for all my Canadians so you can see the back here is kind of reminiscent of the old 300 ZX there's a bit of 240 uh, mixed in here of course the front end is like I said mostly an evolution of like the 370 mixed with the 350 Z and all comes together to make the brand new what we know as a 400 Z but Nissan is just calling the new Z quick start of the interior so you can see a six-speed manual in this one and then we have the automatic with the paddle shifts and a really funky actually gear selector down in this i'll try to bring you guys a more in-depth video on this car maybe go to visit a dealer but yeah i couldn't come to the nissan booth and not show off this car
So I think that's going to do it here for, uh, for today for the media day at the Auto Show 2023, the Canadian International Auto Show. Let me know what your favorite car was that we saw in this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, as always, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.